Daily testing rates for COVID-19 are falling well short of the Ministry of Health's own targets. Yesterday, 1,608 tests were completed, with a seven-day rolling average of 2,348. Both are well short of the 4,000 a day the Director-General of Health estimates is optimal. And while there is currently no evidence of community transmission in New Zealand, Dr Ashley Bloomfield says if there are new cases, the threshold to recommend lockdown restrictions restrictions will be low. I asked the Director General of Health a little earlier about Suzanne Derrett's case and the judge's concerns a lack of mental health screening at the facility was a major failing. Everyone going into managed isolation as they go in does have a full assessment and that includes any mental health needs now and uh, that also that if those needs are identified either when they go in or during their stay there Um, We have got trained staff who can help, both the nursing and other health staff who are there on a 24-7 basis, but also they can call up um, and get support from specialist mental health services. So I think that area has been greatly strengthened. So what is on offer in terms of proactive, routine mental health screening as people come into isolation? Well, they're asked about any needs they have, including physical or mental health needs and those are assessed by the nurses and if they are found to have needs right there at entry then those are then you know specialist services can be brought on board there are also daily check-ins of course by the nursing staff and other staff and if any new needs emerge during the stay then specialist services can be called on is there any thought to reviewing those given this case and the judges comments well what i can say is we're actually constantly reviewing all aspects of the health and other services that are provided to people. For example, we we audit the infection prevention and control. We will, of course, take a very good look at what the judge has found and make sure that those services that might be needed are readily available and that it is clear to people how to reach out and get help if they need it. If we can just uh, look at Australia for a moment, lots of people will be watching that situation unfold with horror. And it reminds us of our, well, our tight lockdown here. So if at any point we get community transmission again in New Zealand, do we go straight to level four lockdown? Well, the decision about um, a lockdown or, or moving up the levels is with Cabinet. Of course, our our mainstay is to identify early if we've got any cases of community transmission so that we can actually put in place measures to ring fence, contact trace and isolate people without having to go into a lockdown situation. So that's why we've used the time over the last few months to absolutely strengthen that national contact tracing capability and capacity. Um, But what it does, it does show that actually if you're going to implement measures that put restrictions on people's movement then the time to do that is early on and I know that there will be a low threshold for us providing advice and I suspect for Cabinet to make decisions about any restrictions, whether those are local or um, more wide. So what's your tipping point then? When you say there would be a low threshold, you are the adviser, so at what point would you advise uh, taking away those freedoms going into a lockdown? Well, it very much depends on the individual situation and that's what was the situ- you know what happened last time. I think one of the things we do have to be you know, sort of aware of is that we're in, a, we're in an alert level one type arrangement. So Kiwis are moving all around the country. And as we've found, for example, with the contact tracing we've done um, on the people who've, who might have been where the, uh, the chap who, who, who's turned up in South Korea and there's been a woman who's turned up in Australia who have tested positive, we're not sure that they were either infected or infectious here, but we've done quite wide contact tracing and in the case of the South Korean person in that investigation, you know, that's involved Auckland, Christchurch and, and Queenstown. We haven't hesitated to do that. But what it does show is if we do get a case, it may well be someone has been, you know, more than just in their local area. And so the contact tracing would, and, and the follow-up would need to happen across the country. So community transmission doesn't necessarily mean restricted movement, or does it? It doesn't necessarily mean, because the idea here is that we implement immediate processes around contact tracing, self-isolation and testing of potential close and casual contacts. And the whole aim of doing that early and of of really scaling up our contact tracing capability is to avoid putting restrictions on movement. So saying, 
um, we won't hesitate to provide advice if we think that's what's needed um, to actually make, con- contain things. What we've seen, of course, if you contrast New South Wales with Victoria, is they have deployed that very rapid um, testing, contact tracing, and so far, um, much lower numbers of cases, and they haven't had to put any restrictions on movement, even though they've got uh, you know cases each day. Keeping track of what's going on is largely due to testing numbers and the Health Minister has said, well, we're still not there yet in terms of the numbers of tests we're doing. I think it was about, what, 1,608 people tested yesterday. Where's the sweet spot? How many do we need to be testing every day? Well, we've had a look at this and we think it depends partly on the number of people in managed isolation facilities and over the last few weeks, because the airline's sort of stop the flights coming in. Our managed isolation facilities have only been at about 50 to 60% capacity. So that's reduced the, the numbers of test, of people being tested there. We have seen an increase over the last couple of weeks in people being tested in the community. We would like more. And I guess our aim is to have everybody who is symptomatic be tested. And also we will be doing, as we are today in Queenstown, these pop-up approaches where we want to do wider community surveillance, including of people who may not have symptoms, but where we're just wanting to be sure there's no community transmission. Can you put a number on it, though, Dr Bloomfield? Well, in total, if we add all those up, we think around 4,000, if that includes our community testing, plus our day 3 and day 12 testing in managed isolation, plus our testing of people who work around the border and in those managed isolation facilities. So So you're way off. Yep. Well, as I say, part of that is due to um, the lower numbers in managed isolation and quarantine. But we do know the numbers in the community has been low. We know people have been declining testing, and that's why we really um, have put a focused effort on that. And we've seen those numbers start to increase over the last week or two. We're wanting them to go higher, and we're also wanting to um, supplement that with these pop-ups. The, the one in Queenstown today is going very well. The last report I had uh, around sort of 1.30 was that had 600 people through already. I understand that you have offered assistance to Australia, in particular to Victoria. Have they taken you up on that? Not at this stage, but in particular what we were wanting to do was, it's not that we've got necessarily advice on what they, uh, what that, that they might be able to use, but it's probably just to be part of their assurance mechanism if they want to test things with us, um, in particular because we have had that experience of going into a very strict lockdown and how that worked, and so we stand ready to provide any support. We've had a really good working relationship with Australia right from the start of this, and that continues. What would you be doing in Victoria right now? I would be doing exactly what they are doing, and that is, you know, really enforcing a very strict lockdown. We know that works here, and I suspect they have looked uh, to what worked in New Zealand, and that has helped informed what, inform what they're doing now. But would you have done it sooner? Oh, look, I don't want to comment on that. You have to respond to what you're seeing on the ground. And, of course, it's not something you can just do. You have to bring people with you. Uh, I think they've reached that conclusion. And uh, I think that, you know, they're confident that once they enforce a strict lockdown, that they will get the result they need, which is to break the chain of community transmission. And do you think it is strict enough right now? Uh, From my reading of it, I think it is. But I know they'll be pulling out all stops to make sure that they achieve what they want to achieve.